Praise the Lord and welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Uh, the platforms that you have given humans the technological skill to create so that we can use them to continue to connect with each other and promote the gospel uh, among and throughout the country, the world, and to all people. Lord, we just thank you for uh, the word that will come forth uh, through the Sunday school, the discussion, the word that will come forth uh, through the preaching. Lord, be in everything that it is that we present to you today. Bless all those that are online, on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever they are connecting to us. Uh, Lord, let your word speak to their hearts so that they understand what it is they need to do either to get right with you or if they are in a right relationship with you, what they That's need to do here. to be leaders. Thank you, Lord, we thank you. We bless your thank name. You. We praise you and we magnify you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone, and we are going to turn things over to uh, Minister Cheryl Twilley right now. Minister Twilley, uh, the floor is yours, and I'm going to pull up your presentation. Okay. Praise the Lord, everyone. We thank you for um, joining, us, joining us for another Sunday School lesson. Um, I just want to put a few disclaimers out there. Is that when I will call your name? Um, Two, Sunday school is a school. It is a time for all of us to learn. It is a time for all of us to get equipped for what we are called to do as leaders. And one, I want you to know that you are leaders. You all know what you're good at leading and you are a leader. You are a leader. And so while last week you would see that um, my PowerPoint has changed, and it's because a uh, Friday on the council during the session um, that um, Elder Jones did, um, God really dealt with me. I could not sleep Friday night because God truly dealt with me on we need to be talking about issues of today. And because I already know that you all are leaders, we're gonna now just equip ourselves for what we need to be doing. So I just want to really quick go back to Farrakhan. I want to make it known that what he does, and, and I just want to make it clear, whether he's a good leader or a bad leader, and for what he does, what he believes in, he is a good leader for what he believes in. Remember, we believe in the kingdom. He believes in the alarms, uh, alarm system. So we, I, I don't want us to get caught up on denomination. I want us to know that what he believes in, he is considered a good leader. Now, even all Muslims don't believe in what he does. So let me clear that up. He is really in a class by himself and, what, and whoever follows him, they believe in that class. Okay, so let's move on to um, today, we talked about the pain already. Um, sometimes the leadership causes you to become a leader through pain. We know that. Um, we're gonna go in today's, today's pop-up is this question that I'm gonna give you before we get to this. So over the weekend, we've been hearing about the, um, the movie, The Glee, The Club, you know that movie, I'm not sure if you 
have seen it, but you heard about all of them have an issue with mental illness. So I want us to talk about, so the pop-up is as a leader and all of you are leaders, as a leader, what, how do we deal with mental illness? Because for one, we do discern. So every leader discerns, we just don't always speak up. So as a leader, how do you talk to someone that is dealing with mental, I know what my answer is. I want to know what your answer is. How do you handle it? How would you handle a person as a leader now? How would you handle um, a person that's dealing with mental issues? Anybody? I hope I don't have to call a leader out. So I can step in. This is Sister Ebony. Okay. Um, first, I, I think in these situations, we have to realize that even the word mental illness has a stigma around it in our community. And um, we have to work, first of all, to destigmatize mm -hmm. that notion or, or, or um, when someone is having that type of crisis. So first of all, we have to realize that and be very careful in like the language that we're mm -hmm. even using when we reach out. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I think as leaders, it's incumbent upon us to have resources available for mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. our followers mm -hmm. uh, that may, um, have these type of crises. And then with those resources, directing them, um, to the, to, to the resources. And in some cases, it's not just directing them like, like you have to, um, be very, uh, instrumental I don't want to say like even holding their hand but like even supporting them through mm -hmm. it because it's it's usually a process that is occurring and mm -hmm. you have to be mindful in every stage of the process and and work to support them through it and then also recognizing like your own skill set and your own ability recognizing if you're not that, not yeah. an expert in that that right there to mm -hmm. take them to someone that is an expert so that's why I say it is always good um to have these resources handy and have relationships with folks that have these expertise in these. Right, things. right. Anyone else wants to answer that? Mr. Show, can I jump in right there? Sure. Um, just connecting to Sister Martin's last statement, I was thinking about pastor's uh, message at council. He came out of Second Chronicles chapter seven. We know that uh, verse 14 and uh, you know the title was, If My People, and of course on the panel, to, uh, Friday afternoon, uh, one of the panelists, I believe it was Pastor Reeves, mentioned uh, the same thing. We we quote that and we jump to the prayer part. Mm -hmm. If my people who are called by my name, mm -hmm. that humility is the first thing That's it. that. That's <laughs> it. And we so what Sister Martin was saying, we have to know what that we aren't we have to know our lane and we have to know where we're not capable, where That's we're it. not qualified, where mm -hmm. we don't have the skills and we don't have the expertise. Stop thinking because we have the Holy That's Ghost that, that we have no, what everybody me. needs. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is, and I agree 100% with Sister Martin, have those relationships, those connections and have mm -hmm. the, the guts to say, I don't know, I don't know. I'll get you some help. Yes. So I'm gonna use. I, I'm can gonna I use, jump in? Sure, go ahead, Fer. Okay, I, I also agree with everything that's been stated, and two, um, we do have people within the body of Christ, too, who mm -hmm. have that background and who mm -hmm. are knowledgeable. So it's great when we can refer them. Mm -hmm. someone within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's, you know, of course, there's resources on the outside, right, um, right, which are helpful as well. But it's also good to know that we do have some um, within the body of Christ. And then sometimes I think the other part of the problem sometimes can be denial, because mm. we even offer, there are sessions that are offered for that. And people don't participate. Mm 
because I think sometimes they're in a state of denial. So sometimes I think we have to be careful how we approach that mm -hmm. uh, with, of course, always much prayer. And sometimes we may need to have a counselor there, you know, mm -hmm. as we address mm -hmm. the person. But I think it's good to know too that there are people within the body of Christ who are trained in that field as well. Right. And, and so my, my, my answer was um, really the same thing as everyone has stated. My answer was that a person may come to you. That's another thing. We need to know the verbiage that they use. We need to know how they act. I mean, a person that's kind of um, feeling a little overwhelmed, you have to watch their um, body language. Um, you have to make sure you listen to what they say. We have to really, as leaders, become really listeners without talking. We have to sometimes just be quiet, let them talk, and then you will, you will hear so much in just that conversation where you're able to help them. Again, as a leader, it doesn't make you um, any competent, nothing, if that's not your expertise. So what I suggest is I did go into the church and I said, health care or health issues, we have Sister Marina. Um, she's a health care provider. She's a boss in what, she's, what she does. And so when you finish praying with them, when you finish um, crying or whatever you need to do in that season that they need you for, hug or whatever, you need to, as a leader, you know, send them to the right person that can now help them find the help that they need. Because just because we prayed at that moment does not mean that that issue is gone. That's what we need to realize. It doesn't mean that issue is gone. That is an issue that they're going to need to talk through and become more stronger in the area of where they're feeling lost. And so we have people, you're right, we have people in positions that we need to use in that leadership capacity because I don't have that answer. I'm, I'm not equipped to, I can pray with you, I can cry with you, but I'm not equipped to actually answer the questions that you need. So I'm going to send you to Sister Moran. Yes, I'm going to use y'all today. So while Friday I was listening, thank you so much for your participation. Ebony um, uh, was talking and Ebony leads in the social unjust. She does it at work. She, she, she knows the verbiage. Me, I get a little upset um, about talking about the, the racial unjust. So that's not, that's not my expertise. So I'm not, going, I'm not going to fall into that category. I'm going to be a leader and be strong enough to know that we as leaders need to be behind her and beside her while she leads us through this um, time of um, racial and social unjust. Why? Because that's what she good in. She leads in that. So I wanted to just tell us something. She didn't know I was going to do this. I just wanted to tell you something. That that's her, that's her strong. That's her strong point. I seen it in her all last month, and I actually seen it in her holding her ground on Friday. And God really dealt with me on talking about what we as leaders are going through and what position we need to take now. So because she leads in that, or because Sister Morant leads in that, it doesn't take away from our leadership abilities. It doesn't make us weak because we're not leading in that particular situation. It really makes us strong because you become a strong leader is a great leader that can follow. A strong leader is a great leader that can follow. And that's something that we need to work on. We need to know how to position ourselves, even though we are leaders how to position ourselves to follow the lead of the person that that's what they are equipped to do. And so it doesn't make you weak. I want you to know that. So on the position now, we're looking at the picture of Al Bishop Brooks. 
And when you look at him, what do you see? And I need somebody, I can't see the words on my position. Thank you. So when you see Bishop Brooks, just at a glance, what do you see? Just from this picture. A prayer warrior. Prayer warrior. If so, you look, I, go ahead. If you're looking at the picture and you don't know who he is, he looks very confident in what he does. Um, you know, very stern as if he knows just what's going on. Yes. When you look at that picture and all pictures that we're going to bring up, you see confidence, you see stern, you, they know their position, they know who they are. Just by looking at the picture, they know who they are. They know what they are called to do. Just by looking at the picture, he looks like I'm about to make a change. Leaders, it is time for us to get in position. You already a leader. I, I, God told me, don't even talk about that part. It is time for us to get in position. And it is time for us to know our position and begin to walk in it. So in the pandemic and the racial um, uh, social dis you know, that we're going through, we need to know what position do we need to be in as the church? What position are we going? What position, what are we taking place? Church is not going to be church as usual. We have been locked up for, all, I'm saying incarcerated, um, really, for almost four months. Almost four months. That's over 120, almost. I mean, it is like, I mean, we have never seen this before, right? And so now we have to now, God is speaking and God is talking to us. And God is telling us things that, wow, as leaders, we need to begin to do. And so the position that we take is dependent on what type of leader you say you are. So can I go to the next one? Um, member, may not always be certain of the exact responsibility. You may not really know all the ins and outs of your leadership ability. That's why we're in Sunday school, so we can learn from one another to understand this is the type of leader that I am. And so now, how do I walk in and in this season? How do I help people with what they're going through in this season? And one is knowing I'm in position. I am ready. Um, I'm in position to do exactly what I'm called to do. And look, when you think about it, when... Um, when in, it's a service and they're in the army, remember we're in the army of the Lord because look, we're talking kingdom. We're not talking church. We're not talking denomination. We're talking kingdom building, kingdom building. That's what we're talking about. We're getting in position for kingdom work. That's what the Lord told me. Kingdom work. Not, I don't, I don't care if you Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever. If we all in doing this for kingdom work, we will succeed in making a difference. And that's what we want to do, make a difference. So guess what? Just get in position. You're next. Okay. The job may have grown with the person or position over a period of years. So I'm talking about in your natural job, you started off maybe as a clerk, maybe as a, um, uh, not really, you was just in your minor. You was doing your minor. I'm into this minor and major. You was in your minor. But as you progressed, as you begin to learn and grow, it became a position over a period of time. Now, is that exactly what God called you for? I'm not sure, but in a position you can learn and you can learn to do it well, even though that's not my major. Even though that's not my major, I may be working in my minor. And so I still can learn and grow and be in position in that particular calling and I can do it well. 
So is anyone on here that started off one thing and you ended up walking in your major? Anybody? Everybody didn't start off the boss. Hey, uh, sister, uh, missionary, this is uh, Lonnie. Okay. You can call me sister. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I, uh, yeah, for where I am now, uh, as far as uh, a manager, uh, when I first started out, uh, I was just a, a, a controller uh, working shift work. And um, over the years, have just worked to be able to um, get to this point to where I am and now managing a team of uh, 25, 30 individ in individuals. So I, I definitely didn't come out of college. I mean, my even through college, I messed up in college. I had actually got kicked out of college, you know, and then uh, started back up again. Um, major wise, the real term of major, yes, I, I continue with the same major once I started back in school again. Um, but I never, and even with that, I was a computer science major, never mm. even at that at that time even knew anything about aerospace engineering. It wasn't even in my vocabulary. So to uh, go through that and end up where I am now is, is definitely a testament to what, what you've uh, stated. Amen. And so we know that it's more. Um, I don't want to call your name. So let's move on to the next one. Problem develops when members or new member arrives more qualified. In the position that you're in, if it's your minor, this is what I'm talking about. If it's your minor, that's all I'm saying. Bishop Brooks knew he was the vice, but his ultimate goal was to become the, the presiding bishop. He was the vice and he worked in it and he worked well, but his ultimate goal was I'm one day going to be the presiding bishop. Now, I know Bishop Brooks a little because one of my best friends, that's her uncle, and they, you know, they all talk and I get the little bit. But I'm just saying, I know that maybe he don't want to do it forever or eight years or whatever, but he walked into it and he knew his position. And the very first convention, you saw a change. You saw a change take place. And when he walked into, he was confident and the Holy Ghost failed. So we know that that's what happens. If you're only working in your minor, you know what your major is. If someone comes in a little bit more advanced because that's their major, you only did it because it was needed at that time. Be a leader enough to say, I'm gonna put that down I'm gonna let you have it. And now I'm gonna walk into what God is calling me to walk into. Why? Because remember, it's called kingdom work. It's called bringing the kingdom together. So that's, I'm gonna go back to Ebony. Ebony, to me as a leader, she is qualified to take us deeper into the social unrest, unjust, I mean, I seen her go from a little angry to now she's able to talk about it and really hold her ground. So as a leader, Cheryl, I am a leader. I know now that my position is to stand with her as she leads us into the area of social. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, maybe she may tell you, you need to join the NWACP. Now I'm going to tell you that. Me and my husband joined. I've been on their I've been on their webinars. I have I have listened. Look, they need saints. They need us to come on and be a part. Sometimes they only think one way. It takes us. It takes the kingdom people to bring it into fruition. Okay, so she may tell you do that. She may tell us that we need to begin our own NAACP. She, what, what I'm saying is, as she began in her major, which is leading us through this, as Sister Morant become more involved in the health side, 
as Elder Greg become telling us we need health insurance, when you find people that need our help, send them to the right people. Our people should not be go funding when we can help them. We have people in our church alone that can help them. We have teachers. It's no reason we have we have um, daycare providers or daycare that can tell you how to, where to go, send your kids here. Don't, we have it. We need to lead and we need to walk in our major. That's the position that I'm asking you to take as a leader. Walk and be in whatever lane you wanna be in at that time. If you wanna be with the social distance, go for it, go with Ebony for it. Don't let her be out there by herself. Let's back her in everything. Why? Because it makes us a good leader because we're following. Okay, can we move on? Any questions? Any questions? None? Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go into what's our purpose. What is our purpose as a leader? What is our purpose? When you look at them, they are, again, they know their purpose. So again, tell me what do you see in each leader? Minister Cheryl, could you, for the people on the phone who can't see these pictures, could you, could you tell them? Okay, so one is Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett, she's a movie star. Um, she, she talks well with um, uh, young, young women. She, she also does that. And the other is, let me get my paperwork. And I know his name, Crump. Benjamin Crump. His name is Benjamin, I believe. Benjamin Crump. And Benjamin Crump is the lead lawyer in the George Floyd case. But he also leads in um, all cases that um, have to deal with um, cop killings or cop murders. He is a very good lawyer in dealing with that. And so what do you see? You see, he knows his purpose. He knows what he's supposed to be doing. Benjamin Crump, he fights for the rights of our people when it comes to unjust in that situation. Um, with Angela Bassett, she knows her purpose. She stands strong in what she believes. And if you think about the movie that she was in um, where she was being abused and Towards the end of the movie, and the movie was named, and I wrote it down. I'm trying to hurry up because it's 11.30. I'm trying to hurry up and get you there. She knows her purpose, but during the course of the movie, Ebony, what was that movie? What's Love Got to Do With It. What's Love Got to Do With It. Thank you. So, and what's love got to do with it, I'm just going to take you to the end. And in the end, she stood up after being abused and she knew her purpose. Her purpose was not to live that kind of life. So she stood up and she fought back. What I'm telling you now, it is time for us to stand up. When the scripture, I went over the scripture and I'm gonna say that real quick. It says, if my people, what God is talking, he's talking to us. If my people, the kingdom's people, would, would just humble themselves, turn. We, we, would, we would be able to walk in our purpose and our position if we get ourselves together. So in becoming a leader, a leader has to humble themselves. A leader has to be passionate. A leader has to be forgiving. A leader has to be loving. We have to, we have to exhibit all kind of qualities in order to become the leader that is needed today. With people going through the pandemic and, and not knowing what's going to happen with them losing their jobs, with the racial tension going on, we need to know that we are secure in ourselves and that we are leading the way God wants us to. So if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, remember nothing that we do, we cannot do it without seeking the face of God. So even with us dealing with health issues, even when us, some leaders need to be in educational, dealing on the educational form, 
even with some of us dealing with women's issues, even with us dealing with the social unrest, we need to know, we need to seek God for the answer. Why? Because it's kingdom work and kingdom building. Know your purpose. So what's the first purpose? Know your purpose. And then I'm, oh, I'm done. Let me just hit that one bullet point. We were planning for God's pleasure. So your first purpose is to offer real worship. That's your first purpose. Offer real worship. That's the purpose that we, we are. We are doing kingdom work in a time of pandemic, in a time of unrest. And I ask you as a leader, know your, know your purpose is number one, is to give real worship to God. He said, if you draw not unto me, I will draw not unto you. He will answer anything and everything that we need, but we have to know our purpose. And so that is all for me today. Thank you so much for joining in on our Sunday school. We appreciate you. We'll be back here next Sunday and we're gonna try to finish purpose. Amen. Amen. Lord, uh, Minister. Twilly and um, we, we were talking earlier before Sunday school and I, I let her know, don't, don't worry about time. Just, just t take your time. If we, you know how we do, if we get on a subject and it needs to be discussed, we will move that way. Um, so we, we just a, a few minutes. Um, if, if anyone has any comments, anyone uh, have any questions for Minister Twilly or just uh, something to throw out for the discussion, we could take uh, you know three or four minutes to, to do that before I turn things over to Elder George. So does anyone have any comments or questions? Uh, I wanted to say praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I wanted to go back to, um, to talking about, when we started off talking about mental illness um, and recognizing that mental illness is sickness. And I think Dr. Jones alluded to a lot of times we try to, um, because we are saved, we try to spiritualize you know, things at the mm -hmm. beginning, but mm -hmm. we have to use wisdom and, and be practical. Um, mm -hmm. Haven't always been saved all our little lives. You know, some of us smoke, drink, did whatever mm -hmm. all night long, you know, and we have to be mindful of that those when we recognize uh, some of the words that may trigger, um, you know, in our spirit or the discernment of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We have to come at, come at it from the uh, another angle of it that just being life, and because we are in mm -hmm. the church, out of things that we see mental illnesses that we recognize in just saints, we you know tend to say let's you know let's pray about it, mm -hmm. you know, or dealt with me on a particular situation, and I I'm not trying to be nosy with the person, but I t and I saw some things and heard some things, so I reached out and I you know wasn't anything about anything just saying you know hey you know haven't talked to you in a while just reaching out you know i'm here whatever the case may be and it allowed that person to have dialogue um and then that person is you know saying man you um came at it from a different angle recognizing that we both know the deal but that person just came out and just said hey man you were very tactful and i can receive it you know from you and i take what you're saying you know, in love, knowing that that person is, was saved, but, you know, the life situations or whatever, things have gone, you know, a different yeah. direction. So mm -hmm. we as saints have to remember that it's a sickness and we it's have to be mindful of, of that and not spiritualize everything. So we'll just pray mm -hmm. about, yes, we can, you mm -hmm. know, lead them to the person that does have the expertise, but just like, you know, Mr. Cheryl said, just listening and just talking um, to the person, um, you'll find out a whole lot. And the Lord will, and, and on that aspect, mm -hmm. the back and the Lord will give you the words to say, because they may not need, you know, get back in church or do they may need, <laughs> hey, I'm here, I'm just listening. You know, mm -hmm. you call me, I'm here, I'm listening. So that, you know, just came up in my mind when we were speaking of mental illness. Can I just say this real quick? We have to know our priority. And a lot of times we don't, um, because we are so emotional, um, because we're definitely emotional people and it's easy for us not to like or not to do 
we don't really walk as leaders. Can I tell you to know your priority? Know that whether you like a person or not, that you still have to know what they're good at leading in. And so even in mental illness, when they come to you, I may not have the word or I may have just Bible. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't, don't scripture them to death because they already, most of the time in the church, they already know the word. They really need a, a higher, they, they don't need me to say, oh, because the word say he'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And the, they, don't do that as leaders. I'm just saying, we have to know our position. Don't make them feel like this because they're having an issue with mental illness, especially during the time that we're living in now. Don't make them feel like you shouldn't have that feeling. They should have them feel as if that's how they feel. I think that's when we need to step back and realize as a leader, I, all I can do is hug you and pray and cry. I need to send you. I need to, I don't need to give you the wrong verbiage because a lot of times that's what we do. We, we, we say words that they be like, mm. so give them to someone who can give them the right verbiage who can soothe that mind frame and we and take it and what it won't the blood won't be on our hands. As a leader, we don't want unnecessary blood on our hands. Oh, can I say something? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a good one on that mental piece because I know for a long time myself, when I used to hear doctors or people say something about a psychologist or something, my mind went straight to they crazy. And mm -hmm. if I thought that way, other people could have thought that way. And mental illness is an illness like your diabetes, your high blood mm -hmm. pressure, and all of that. And mm -hmm. so long in the church, it might not be now, but I'll say before, <laughs> the only thing that we always or people came out of their mouth with was, let's pray about it. Yes, mm -hmm. pray about it. But you just don't pray about your blood pressure or your diabetes. You, you go, go get to help. a doctor. You That's go get it. you help. And I, mean, I, I went on for a long time and, and I thank God how he allowed me to go through what I went through. And when he allowed me to share, there was, there's so many people in the church that have some mental illness things going on. <laughs> you don't have to be crazy. It's a lot of other pieces mm. in mental illness besides yeah. just being cuckoo clock. That's so, it. You're right. Amen. That was my little. Amen. Thing. You're right. Amen. Amen. Uh, anyone else quickly? 30 seconds. Amen. So again, so again, so again, let's just say, please, please, as leaders, know your position and know to send them, use your verbiage and send them to the right help. That's all. They need to be able to be able to connect with the right leader in order to get the help that they need amen amen and it's all about amen. leadership and we thank the lord for um minister uh, cheryl bringing in the example of mental health and where leaders as an example because there's so many issues that we need to deal with within the body of christ and of course within the world where leaders uh, need to know their position they need to be passionate but they also need to be humble and know where their lane is and who to point people towards. I'm reminded, exactly. I don't know if it was Elisha or Elijah, forgive me, but uh, the, the prophet had uh, other prophets with them and they made a pot of stew. And one of the minor leaders went out and got some wild gourds or wild cucumbers and came back and cut them up and put them in the stew and it poisoned the whole thing. Well, see, that minor leader was out of order. And then the main leader, the man of God, had to come in and and, and put some meal or something in, in there to, to, to fix uh, what was going to be going out to the people. So we have to know where we are. Uh, Elder Morant, was that you, sir? I thought I saw Elder Morant come on. Uh, I'm sorry, that was me. And if I was just saying that wasn't this show. Alicia, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, we are looking forward to next week.
uh, to continue the discussion. Uh, Minister Cheryl, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we are going to turn the remainder Amen. of the over to uh, Elder George Twilley, Jr. Elder George, if you're there, the Zoom is yours, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful to be in the house of the Lord today and to have this opportunity to uh, worship with you on this Sunday morning. We're going to uh, move forward into our Sunday worship service and uh, we're going to uh, worship the Lord this morning. First, we want to be able to present with you our church announcement. So we'll receive at this time our church announcements. Prayerfully, we'll have the, all these audio things working. We had some issues at the church this morning, but we'll receive our church announcements at this time. And following that, uh, we'll worship the Lord in our giving. So let's receive our announcements. Praise the Lord. And welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Here are your morning announcements for the week of July 12th, 2020. The D.C., Delaware, and Maryland District Council hosted a great online session last week. We were blessed by the message, If My People, delivered by Pastor Twilly. Additionally, Dr. Brandon Jones and Sister Ebony Martin offer keen spiritual perspectives on social action. You may visit the Council's Facebook page for a replay of the sessions. All members are requested to participate in our nightly prayer assignments as we seek the Lord for healing, deliverance, and justice in our nation and for the world. We are in prayer each night from 7 p.m to 7.30 p.m. Prayer assignments are as follows. Mondays, last names beginning in A through E. Tuesdays, last names beginning in F through J. Wednesdays, last name beginning in K through O. Thursdays, last name beginning in P through T. Fridays, last names beginning in U through Z, and all members are asked to participate on Saturdays and Sundays. Join the Men of Valor Ministry for their bi-monthly Men's Corner Meeting this Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Please see your screen for additional details. Online Bible study will be held this Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Pastor Twilly will facilitate this week's lesson via Zoom. All are welcome to attend. Join us next Sunday at 11 a.m. for Christian education and morning worship. Services are streamed live each week on our website, YouTube, and Facebook. There is a word for you. Proverbs 9.11 says, for through wisdom, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. The Jews for Christ Ladies Ministry is celebrating life free. Ladies, grab a piece of cake, ice cream, cupcakes, or your favorite snack and meet us on Zoom. Friday, August 21st at 7.30 p.m. for an evening of fellowship and fun. The virtual summer convention of the Pentecostal Assembly of the World will be held July 29th through August 1st. Speakers will include Bishop Noel Jones, Pastor John Hanna, Evangelist Sandra Riley, Bishop Lambert Gates, and our presiding Bishop Theodore L. Brooks. Sessions will be aired at pawinc.org. For additional updates during the week, please visit the church website at www faithhopecharityministries.org or our social media pages. Please govern yourself accordingly and have a blessed week. Amen. We thank the Lord for our announcements on this morning. At this time, we invite you to worship the Lord with us in our giving. So we invite you at this time to take time to share in the rendering of your tithe and your offering to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. We definitely appreciate all of you who have been faithful in your giving uh, over these past few months and all year long and in supporting the ministry with your tithe and your offering for those who have been donating to the church building fund and also to our annual 
anniversary assessments, we also commend you for your faithfulness and giving unto the Lord. And so at this time, we do encourage all uh, to take a moment to share in the ministry of giving on this morning. Uh, we're going to put on our screen our ways of giving and ask that you would just uh, choose one of those on this morning. You can give via Givelify. You can give on Cash App at dollar sign FHCM. You can give at our website, faithhopeandcharityministries.org. You can click on make a donation and submit your offering. You can also, if need be, mail a check or a money order payable to Faith Hope and Charity Ministries. And you can mail that to 3804 Endicott Place in Springdale, Maryland, 20774. So we invite you again to take a moment at this time and to uh, render your offering unto the Lord. We thank you for your liberal giving. And as always, we are praying that the Lord would restore unto you on this morning and on every day, 100 fold in Jesus name. God bless you for your giving on today. Uh, two additional notes that we did want to make reference of on this morning. Um, we did want to make sure that we extend birthday greetings to Sister Carolyn Martin as she celebrates her birthday today. We salute the Lord and celebrate with her another year of living. So happy birthday to Sister Martin on this morning. We also did want to request your prayers for the family of Pastor uh, Arthur Carney, uh, Elder Arthur G. Carney Sr., who was the pastor emeritus of Emmanuel Apostolic Church of Dover, Delaware. Uh, we made mention of uh, praying for him and his family a few weeks ago. As you know, he was diagnosed and tested positive for the coronavirus, and uh, he uh, passed from complications of COVID on yesterday afternoon. We're asking that you would continue to pray for him, for, for his family, for his wife, uh, Evangelist Adeline Carney, who also is recovering from coronavirus. Pray for his son, Pastor Eric Carney, who is also recovering from coronavirus, along with his wife and his uh, children. All, all of them were tested positive for coronavirus. So please, urgently, we ask that you lift up the Carney family, as well as Emmanuel Apostolic Church, in this time that the Lord would continue to sustain them and keep them uh, through this, this troubling time. So let's remember our, uh, the Carney family and Emmanuel Apostolic Church on today. We are preparing ourselves to receive the word of the Lord on today, but just before our pastor comes, we did want to take a moment to share with you and to rehearse with you our scripture for the month of uh, July, which comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And if we can all take a moment and either quote it by memory or as uh, shame on me, I will be reading it as well today. But we're reading the amplified version of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And it reads, be kind and helpful to one another, tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. That is our scripture for the month of July. So we have a couple more weeks to commit that to memory uh, as we study Ephesians chapter four and verse 32. All right. So we are also excited at this time as we are ready to receive the word of the Lord on this morning. We had a great Sunday school session with Minister Cheryl Twilley. And today, at this time, we're going to receive the word of the Lord from our pastor. Pastor, did pastor preach this week at the council? Pastor preached to us this week. Uh, and we are excited to hear what the Lord has to share through him on this morning. So at this time, we're going to prepare to receive the pastor and founder of Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Let's salute our pastor on this morning. In the comments section, just type preach pastor. Just let him know that you got his back this morning, that you're praying with him as, he receive, as we receive the word of the Lord from our pastor. Let's receive Pastor George Twilley. God bless you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are thankful to the Lord for all the things that he has done and that he is doing. We are grateful to the Lord for the Christian Education Department and for the lessons that they have been instructing and giving insight on leadership. We are thankful to the Lord for we are just completing uh, another um, virtual uh, council session, as you've heard in the announcement. Did have uh, a nice day. Uh, we've enjoyed our time. Um, we're blessing the Lord right now for what He is doing, even in our midst, as we adjust to uh, the various uh, opportunities that He's given us to 
use this uh, mechanical and electronical uh, things. Y'all see in this? I need to stand here. Uh, so we are thankful to God for how he continues to bless us, uh, even in times like this. We are uh, uh, crying out and praying for the Kearney family, uh, District Elder Elect uh, Kearney, as you know, in the announcement transition. And he was definitely a hardworking man, always uh, helping as much as he possibly can with when we were uh, when he was with the D.C., Delaware, Maryland, and I'm sure uh, when he moved over to AFFI, he continued to uh, get his hands in the mix. He was one that always uh, had a, a quiet demeanor, but he definitely uh, knew what he was doing and was very helpful uh, to the body of Christ. So we're thankful to God for how he continues to bless and strengthen and how he continues to walk with us, talk with us, and bring us to a point where we can uh, definitely give shout outs to our brother and sister. So I enjoyed the council. I, I hopefully you did. Hopefully you had time to to sit in some of the sessions. Uh, um, Sister Bullock, she opened up uh, with a powerful me message, letting us know that it's such a time as this, and we're thankful how uh, from there we went into a leadership session. <laughs> we're continually maneuvering this thing, uh, but we're grateful how the leadership session uh, was a great job with Elder. Uh, well, we, we call we say we call him doctor, but how Ed, Edward he, how he continued to share with us uh, our prospects and pr perspectives on being a good leader. Um, and then, of course, I want to uh, thank all the uh, church memberships for their participation on a Thursday night as we uh, continued with uh, the closing out now of a Thursday, Thursday session. session. So, so I'm, I'm going to move right along with our uh, service today. Don't want to. Uh, tie that we're having some some technical difficulties, but we're knowing that God is going to work it out. Um, so if you will turn with me um, and do remember your, your scripture reading for the month, um, beautiful lesson or message there in that uh, teaching us how we should act and how we should carry ourselves. So continue to read that. Uh, Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, uh, verses 1 uh, through 4, uh, Deuteronomy, the second law, written again, and it gives us, and the Lord has continued to give us insight. Uh, he keeps repeating some things, but it's, sometimes we need it to hear it again because we didn't get it right the first time. We threw it away just like and broke it up, broke the, the commandments up, and we just throw things aside. But we want to go into his word today in Deuteronomy 20, uh, verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to read uh, two translations. I'm going to read the King James and then I'll read the message translation as well. Uh, starting off in Deuteronomy 20 using the King James Version. And it says, when thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be given it shall be when ye are when ye are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Hmm. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The message translation puts it this way. When you go to war against your enemy and you see horses and chariots and soldiers far outnumbering you, do not recoil in fear of them. God, your God, who brought you up out of Egypt is with you. When the battle is about to begin, let the priest come forward and speak to the troops. He'll say, attention Israel, in a few minutes, you're going to do battle with your enemies. Don't waver in resolve, don't fear, don't hesitate, don't panic. God, your God is right there with you, fighting with you against your enemies fighting to win, fighting 
to win. And out of this passage of scripture, I'm going to leave this thought with you. God is on my side. God is on my side. God is on my side. Subtopic, hashtag Jesus. Hashtag. <laughs> Uh, hashtag, you normally see that as a, a phrase that precedes this when the symbol's there, uh, it classifies or it categorizes the accompanying text. You don't normally use it when you're seeing people using Twitter and what have you. Uh, but what it does, it, it indicates what a message, it tells you, it tells you what's gonna be happening. That symbol, you, when you see the symbol, it's gonna give you a brief indication of something, something, something. So something, hashtag Jesus, he's somebody, he is, what's happening. He's everything that we definitely need and one that we should be calling upon. He is the one that's by our side. Uh, uh, looking at this passage of scripture, uh, we, we find that uh, Deuteronomy is talking, you know, I was just thinking about this. War, going into war, it is a hard thing. It's, it's not easy. It's, it's something that really throws you. War is something that keeps uh, us going, 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 going. And look, I'm telling you right now, when you're in a battle, when you're fighting, uh, we have to really understand that a war like this, it's a spiritual war. It's something, it's a spiritual battle. Uh, you know how when we're going into war, it, it seems like everything is thrown at us. Uh, war unlocks uh, the chains of hell. It unlocks uh, uh, and sets free uh, demonic spirits. It is a bad thing that war does, but it brings out about a spirit of killing. It brings out a spirit of slaughter. It brings out a, a, a maiming and rape, and it brings out brutality and, and savage and pain and suffering and starvation. It brings out negative things. It's such a destructive thing. It destroys property. It tears down economies. War is rough. War is rough. A host of demonic spirits are being released on the earth and on human people. But uh, despite these uh, terrible and horrible things, there are times when uh, war is necessary. Uh, there are times when we must protect ourselves from those who attack and seek either to dominate us or to slaughter, slaughter us, even our children and our loved ones. So sometimes we find that war is a necessity. Uh, because we are living in a sinful world where the heart of man is uh, desperately weakened. There are times when we must declare war and fight for our very su survival. We're seeing today that we are in a battle. We are looking to step forward and get our rights. They talk about uh, equality. And so we're battling against some things, some principalities and some laws and rules and things like that. It's time for us to really stand up and be, to be ready to fight, to fight, to fight, to fight. It's a good fight. To fight, to fight, to fight, to fight. So the present passage of scripture uh, is talking about a war being waged by the Israelites. God, God gave uh, yeah, very specific rules and very specific laws on how we're supposed to walk, how we're supposed to talk, and he gives us specific rules on how we are supposed to battle, how we're supposed to win a war that is really already given to us. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's, and he's already given us the winning answer. He's already given us everything that we need to fight the battle. We are victory is assured to us, and we must really understand that as long as God is on our side, we're winners. We're winners. We're winners. So, so, so there's an assurance of victory given by God. Victory over all, all of our enemies. Look, remember, the Israelites were camped by, uh, by the uh, Jordan River uh, in the plain of Moab. They were there ready. They could see the promised land. They were right outside of Jer uh, Jericho, they, the great city of Jericho. There was soon to be a, a, a big force marching against them. But look, I'm going to tell you, he tells them up front. He says, don't, don't get all better. Don't get all upset when you see that your enemies, there's a great number. Don't get all upset when you see the horses and the chariots uh, and, and a great number of people coming. Don't be afraid of them because the Lord is with you. Things are going to be happening in our life that we're going to see that we feel that we're outnumbered. But I'm telling you today that the numbers that they put up, 
don't mean a thing because God is in control. He's working things out for our good. So Moses charges the people. He says, do not fear the enemy. That's what he says in 20 and 1. He says, he warned them. He had to sit down and he talked. Sometimes you need to talk from your leader. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you need them to give you some words of encouragement. So sometimes we forget, we look at the enemy and we be distracted from what God had already told us that the victory is assured, that you're going to win this battle. But sometimes we look at how things are so uh, enormous that you forget all about who's on your side. Look at what the Bible shares with us. Look at David. David had a mindset. He was going to fight that big, tall giant. Six, nine foot six. The Bible lets us know that he, he had a, a helmet that was made out of bronze. He, that lets us know that his breastplate, his covering of him, that thing were 125 pounds. Look, David went before the enemy. He was no, he said, I'm not worried about this uncircumcised Philistine. He stood his ground. So if you look at the resume as far as a, a warrior, the Goliath outnumbered uh, David. Goliath had all the credentials for being ready to fight. And all David, come on here, all he had was some stones. Look, all David had was a mindset to know that he could go up against him because God was with him. You can't be afraid. You can't be terrified. You can't tremble in pain. You got to be able to stand in a time like this. So Moses assures the people that God would be with them. He would uh, tell them that victory was at hand, no matter how the enemy looked. He said, we can do this. You, you have everything that you need to go into battle. Look, I'm going to tell you, the language of warfare is a picture of a believer, a spiritual warfare uh, against the enemies of the world. The, the war fought by the Christian believers is not a, an earthly war, but a, a spiritual war. As a believer marches uh, to the promised land, that's what they were doing. You've got to really understand that heaven, uh, oh my God, heaven, heaven belongs to you and that the enemy, any enemy attacks him and he tries to slow you down and tries to bring temptation against you as you go through. Look, there are diseases, COVID-19 trying to throw us down. Look, there are accidents and there's immorality and there's greed and there's covetedness and there's anger and there's, you can keep going, failure, you know how it is. And even on your job, people don't know if they're gonna be able to make ends meet because they don't know if their jobs are still gonna be there. Look, death on every side. Everything happens when you're in a spiritual battle. Ah, oh, come on here, somebody. When you're going through a battle, the enemy's gonna come, but your mind begins to work. Those numbers are too, too awesome for me to fight against. And you're ready to throw in the towel, but I'm telling you, don't throw it in. Stand, don't be afraid, don't faint, don't lose heart, don't be terrified, don't tremble and panic. Ha, he, he, he says in a, in, in a verse, uh, verse two to four, he really gets down to where he gives us additional things. He sends out the priest, the appointed priest. They were they're there to encourage the people. He was before they go out to battle. The priest was addressing the army, giving them four charges for them to stand by, telling them, "Don't be uh, faint. Don't fall out. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. Don't panic." Look. So sometimes the message has to be repeated over and over for us to really understand that we can do this. We can do this. There's nothing too hard for God's people. Uh, sometimes enemies are small and they're weak. Uh, they amount to nothing more than a, a temptation or a trial. But sometimes the enemy, he puts a lot on you. They get overbearing and you don't know what to do. You're kind of lost. But I'm going to tell you the whole fact. Look, Jesus, the Lord, I mean, God told told uh, 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 Moses when he was out there after leaving Egypt, he said, use the tools that I gave you. All you got to do, victory, is using what God has given you. I'm so grateful how this scripture really reminded the people of Israel, just like I pulled you out of Egypt. The enemy that you had then, there was, Egypt was a formidable force. Uh, I I laugh and use the word formidable. My grandson, I think he was three at the time, his teacher on one of his report cards, the first one maybe that he got, she said he was a force to be reckoned with. Ah, uh, Egypt was a force to be reckoned with. When you beat Egypt, you don't beat some, you beat somebody. Ah, uh, people from miles and miles around heard about the exploits of how the children of Israel gave Egypt more than they could handle. 
Uh, well, I'm going to tell you right now, when God is, is on your side, you can give the world something to see. So it, there was, have there, you know, the scripture lets us know that there's no temptation taken you, but uh, uh, that is common to man. But God, he faithful, who he will not let you suffer. Look, he, he won't let you be tempted. Look what he's able to do. He's going to always give you a way of getting out. He's going to give you that escape route so that you can make it out of it. He tells us in his word that now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the powers that worketh in us. So we have to be ones that are really willing to come and boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man should do unto me. We got to be ready to fight, church. We got to be ready to fight and we're willing to fight because we know that we have God on our side hashtag jesus we got him right there and he's always there willing to help the people of god so stop being fearful it's time to stand up and fight this good fight that's what he wants us to do ah don't throw in the towel no you don't have to have fear you don't have to tremble you don't have to be terrified you don't have to throw in your towel i'm telling you right now it's time for us to stand up and be willing to give the enemy a touch, give him, give him a taste of his own medicine, put him to flight, put him on his knees and make him run. Look, there was a, a, a example looking at Gideon. Here Gideon, he didn't feel like he was equipped to fight. He, he said, I come from the smallest tribe. Look at this. I come from the smallest tribe. I don't have the credentials. There's somebody else that's far greater than me. But he looked at how God was with him. He moved the numbers down. Look, you can start off with a high number of men to fight with you. But at the end, God sees that you don't need all that. God will give you the things that you need to win your battle. But you got to trust him. You got to lean on him. You got to be willing to stand in a day and a time like this. I'm telling you today, church, that long as you have God on board, you can't lose. You can't lose. Especially when God sits there and tell you that victory today is my victory today is my I told come on I told Satan get thee behind me because victory today is mine we're going to get through uh, this pandemic we're going to get through all these uh, issues that are out there today I'm believing that God has victory at hand for us and if you believe with me you are to start rejoicing at what God is about to do when you start thinking of the goodness of Jesus and knowing that God had already promised you victory, you start to need to stop worrying about things that you don't need to worry about. When we say cast all our cares on him, when you cast everything, you should be relieving yourself of a lot of weight. Look, I'm telling you today, God's got this. He's got it. And he's not going to let us down. We got to believe that God's going to do it. Ah, look what God keeps telling us because he's an almighty God. If he's on your side, he's going to fight for you. He's going to cause you to be victorious. It doesn't matter what the odds are against you. The Lord is on my side. It doesn't matter if the circumstances are insurmountable. The Lord is on my side. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter if they're hopeless. Uh, the Lord is on my side. It doesn't matter if the situation is bigger than you and I. The fact of the matter is that the Lord is on my side. And that's all I need to know, that Jesus is on my side. Hashtag Jesus is on my side. Glory. Paul writes in Romans 8 and 31, say, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, when it says, if God be for us, it's not telling us about position because God is before us. He's behind us. He's to the left. He's to the right. Look, he's all around us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He sticks closer to us than a brother. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. It means that the Lord is on your side. So what shall we say to these things in the beginning? Ha, ah, the part of Romans. Look at this. It says, there is no condemnation to those in Christ. 
Christ has made me free from the law and the sin of death. To, to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Uh, if we walk in the spirit and the spirit, come on church, if we walk in the spirit, the spirit of God dwelleth in us. Uh, that spirit one day will quicken our mortal bodies and we will have to rise and to meet him in the air. He has adopted us into his family. Uh, he has called us. He's justified us. He has glorified us. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the one who's got our back. The one who's helping us make it through the end. The one who said, I'm beside you right now. I got you. You know, I was thinking, let me flash back a little bit. I have to use Jojo again. Jojo loves wrestling. That boy. At four years old, he knows all the wrestlers. He sits there. I hope we can put as much Bible in him as we put wrestling matches in him. But he can tell you all about each of the wrestlers, their history. And, you know, there are different types of wrestling matches. You got the, uh, the cage, steel cage match. Uh, you got uh, the one that really sticks with you is that, that tag team match. <laughs> you know, you know how it goes. It's the one where you, you, your partner's in there fighting and, and he may be getting beat really bad and, and, and he's got to reach out and tag his partner's hand so they can switch and, and maybe have a, a, an opportunity to win. Uh, but let me tell you, God don't need you to reach because, you know, you can't, you, if you ever seen him do it, there's sometimes you, you can't get to your partner's hand. You can stretch your hand only so far and then the opponent's gonna pull you back so that you can make that tag team but i'm gonna tell you right now no matter how far you might be from uh god uh you might feel it that way but his arm just continuously to stretch it out until he tags you and then he comes back and he begins to win the war or win the battle i'm talking about a tag team partner that you don't have to call him because he knows what you stand in need of He's always, he's got your back. He's right there by your side. You can always call on Jesus. You can call him at the nighttime, call him during the day, as long as you call him up. Because he's the one that'll take us through. He's right there by my side. The Lord is by my side. As long as you have a relationship with God, he's on your side. That means you have to, Repent of your sins. You have to be baptized in Jesus' name. And have to be filled with his Holy Spirit. He's by your side. Isaiah 59 and 1 says, Behold the Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is, is it ear heavy, that it cannot hear. So I'm telling you, he can reach out and touch you whatever match you're in. Because when you reach out to him, there's no shortage in his arms. He, to his mercy, it extends daily. It's a daily thing. To his grace, to his power, to his salvation, to his ability, to his love, to his healing. God is there at all times. And all you need to do is have that repentant heart. And God will step in. I'm talking about building a relation with him. Ah, he can do it. He can do it. The Lord is on my side. He says, I will not fear what can man do unto me. He's on my side. Ha, that's what we have to really understand. The psalmist put it in 118 and 6. I'm telling you today, church, you don't have to worry. You need to be able to fight the battle, especially when God sits there and gives you instructions. When God tells you to go into a battle, don't, don't, yeah, you should be relaxed. But the problem sometimes is that we don't consult him before we go try to fight a battle. We'll go out there and try to fight on our own. But I'm telling you today that you need to consult God in everything. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. I'll give you everything that you need. I'll take you through every test. So when you come up against your giant, you will be able to stand and fight him just like David was. When you see the enemy is 
unsurmountable. And then you get like uh, Gideon was, you won't be fearful and try to throw in the towel. Even when your numbers aren't what they seem to be. Even when the numbers are, don't appear to be something that can be combated to somebody that has many more than you. You can stand and know that you can win this war. You can win the battle. You got what it takes. You have everything that you need to win. Even the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, here they are, all upset. Why did you, Moses, bring us out here? They're across the desert. They're on the other side of the water, and they still are murmuring and complaining. Look, God works things out at his own time, but he wants us to come to him at the right, with the right attitude and the right, right mindset. He will never put more on you than you can bear. That's why I said, if the Lord, come on here, church. I'm still stuck on maybe that if factor. Yeah. He said, <laughs> if, yeah. who's on the Lord's side right now? I want to know just who's on the Lord's side. If uh, the Lord brings you out, if he does it, you are winning, you're on a winning team. You can do it. You have to worry about things. You can take and look at just how he dealt with uh, so many people in the Bible. You won't be fearful like Daniel and, and, and look at the Hebrew boys to be able to go to the fiery furnace knowing that if you stand on God's word, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not going to bow down. We won't do it. God will take you through the test that you have. Somebody ought to know that's just a test. It's just a test. And God gives you the answer sheet. I shared with a, a family member the other day that's going through a test. I told him, don't worry. God has already given you the answer sheet. Just go ahead and read it. Continue to read his word. It'll help you go through your test. And that's the same thing for us, church. God has given you the answer, the answer for your success. All you have to do is meditate on his word day and night. And God will bring you through because the Lord is on your side. Ah, he's on your side and you don't have to worry. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the hands of the enemy. Just like he did the Hebrew boys. The Lord took Daniel through. Daniel, he prayed diligently and God brought him through the test. I'm telling you right now that we don't have to worry about reaching out to tag his hand. God's right there willing and able to bless you. So look, church, as we go through the days of this year, because things are not going to be as they used to be. But one thing that's going to be constant is the fact that I can call on my God at any time because I know that he's there by my side. I know that he's watching out, that he would hold no good thing from me, that he cares for me. And it, that's why he would tell me to cast all my cares upon him. That's when I can really understand that God, he's got my back. He's got my front. He's got both sides. He's got all, all, of me, all of me covered. So if he's got all of me covered, I don't have to fear the enemy. I can walk huh, in darkness and knowing that he will shine the light. I can walk, look, get like, just like the preacher told us a few weeks ago, we have to get out of our comfort zone. We got to be able to walk on water, believing that God called us to do it. And if he didn't call you, don't go. But if he calls you, let it be known, your faith will take you through. There are going to be many tests and trials that we're going to come up with. We're going to see them day by day. We have leadership that we can't trust, but you can always trust in God. We got to trust him and believe him and lean, lean not on our own understanding. But in all our ways, we have to acknowledge him and God will take us through. Hashtag Jesus. He's the one. That's our answer, church. That's the one that's going to take us through. That's the one that we love today. Jesus and Jesus only. Remember, as you go through your daily activities, that deliverance, God wants us to be delivered from the ills of this world. He's provided the mechanism for us to be successful. Just like he taught Israel how to fight battles, as he taught them how to prepare themselves for battle, how he taught them not to look at the other enemy as being more than them, because we know that we are more than conquerors, that you have to get beyond what you see sometimes and go by what you know. And what we know that the Lord, our God, ah, he cares so much for us. 
that he loves us so much that he went to the cross and gave of himself to, for you and for I. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. He's a wonder. And he continues to give us the instructions that we need so that we can fight the spiritual warfare. And that's what we're in. We're in a spiritual battle. We're fighting the good fight of faith. We're not throwing in the towel. We're standing on God's word. If God said it, the Bible says that settles it. So we can believe that God's word stands above all that man can hear and do. So if anybody comes with you any other gospel, <laughs> the word tells us he's a curse. So you have to trust him. I don't know about you, but I'm putting all my trust in God. I'm putting all my hope in him. I'm believing that he's got my best interest at heart and that he's already worked it out for me. He knows my beginning from my end. So he's already got my pattern laid out. And all I'm doing is trusting him. I'm believing that heaven is going to be my home one day. And because I believe that, I can walk in light. Lord God, we thank you today for this message. We thank you today knowing that, that you are on our side. And when I say you, I'm saying hashtag Jesus. Because I know that he's got my back. He's got me covered all over. And I can rely on him to take me through each and every test that you that the world tries to send me through. I'm not going to get all fettered by the numbers that I see. I'm not going to get all upset by some of the actions that the leaders put out there. But I'm going to trust God that all things work together for the good. I'm believing that he's working things out for my I might not see it, but I'm going to believe that my good is coming up out. Something's good got to come out of this mess. Something. So I'm trusting him. God bless you, church. May heaven smile upon you. And at this time, I'll turn the services back into the hands of Elder George. And look, join in this week for Bible class. Men, let's continue to participate in our sessions that we have on Tuesdays. Lord God, we're thanking the Lord right now, even in this uh, pandemic and through all that we're going through, that we're still able to fellowship together, that we're still able to share God's word, that we're still able to learn. And I'm telling you, whatever you pull up out of these lessons that you get share them with your neighbors share them with your friends that's what evangelism is all about let's be the good soldiers that god has called us to be because we have a battle we had a war going on but god has equipped us with everything that we need to win number one he gives us the assurance number two he just doesn't give us the assurance he gives us his word to take with us as we go out to battle i say god bless you once again in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for the word of God coming to us this morning from Pastor Twilly, encouraging us to, to know and realize that God is on our side. Uh, Pastor Briscoe and his wife, Lady Valerie, they sing a song that says, it's been a long, long journey, but God has been right there by my side and what a blessing it is to know what an assurance it is to know uh, what have I to dread what have I to fear when we can lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus and know that he is right there on our side today if you have heard the word of the Lord and after hearing the message today the Lord has touched your heart the Lord has spoken to you from the scriptures as our pastor has shared with us this timely and powerful message. Uh, if you're listening today and you don't know the Lord in the pardoning of your sins, we invite you at this moment uh, to take part in finding out more about who our, our great God is. You can repent of your sins today and you can be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you need to prayer today, if you would like to have more information about this God who's been on your side, even from before the foundation of the world. You can call the church even right now at 240-334-0121. We'll pray with you. We'll talk with you. We'll show you through the scriptures what God has destined for your life. It's the blessed assurance that we have in Christ Jesus, knowing that he has been there on our side and that he's there fighting with us and he's there guiding us. And we're not in the battle alone. Even though this world may seem confusing, this world may seem uncertain, we have a savior. We have an anchor. We have somebody who's right there 
on our side. Why don't you call today? You can call again at 240-334-0121. You can even email the church at faithhopecharityministries at verizon.net. You can send us your prayer requests and we will be in prayer with you, trusting and believing the Lord to intervene and to show himself strong on your side. Before we close today, we do want to uh, just render a prayer of all of you who are uh, viewing today's service and those who are with us on Zoom. We just want to uh, render a prayer with you as we go through this week. Let's Let's talk to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for the word that you have given us today. We thank you because in a world where it can seem so lonely, in a world of isolation, in a world where it seems that everyone is on their own, thank you for being on our side. Thank you for being a refuge and a strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, thank you because you show yourself mighty, you show yourself strong when others seem to be far away and distant. God, you are right there. You are nigh us even, hallelujah. The word is nigh us even. The word that we speak, the word of faith is right there in our mouth. You are as close as we can breathe. You are as close as we can open our mouth and touch. You are tangible. You are something that we can reach out and feel. God, we thank you for the assurance that we have through the word of God that you'll never leave us nor will you forsake us. Father, I pray for those who are watching today's service. I ask God that you would bless them and keep them. I ask God that you would strengthen and encourage. I ask God that you would minister to their needs, God. You know what each and every individual stands in the need of at this moment. Father, release your peace. Father, release your joy. Father, release strength. Father, release hope. Father, release assurance. Release confidence in you, God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. We bind the hand of the enemy. We bind every distraction. We bind every manner of sickness and disease. We bind every attack of the enemy. We bind the spirit of lack. We bind confusion. We bind uncertainty. We bind a lack of faith in the name of Jesus. God, have your way right now. Touch your people. Bless us as we go throughout this week. Those, oh God, who need to know you and the power of your resurrection and God who need to experience God, even resurrection in their own life. Those who have never experienced salvation. I pray for them today that you would touch their heart, God. Give them a mind to cry out, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I pray that this day that they will repent of their sins and that they would be baptized in your name. Feel someone with the gift of the Holy Ghost today, God. Some backslider, Lord. Someone who needs to be restored. Someone who needs to be reclaimed, Father. I pray that you would draw them in unto you. Bless us on this week. Keep us and protect us. Watch over us. Be our help. Be our God. Give us productive weeks, God. Help us to come back at the appointed time with victory in our souls. Father, we're grateful to you and we're thanking you for all these things that you have done. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see the men on Tuesday and we'll see everyone on Wednesday evening for Bible study. Have a blessed week.